Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. 8x squared minus 2x minus 1. So the way we're going to factor these is the first thing we're going to look for is a GCF. And I want to try and get through all 13 of these, so we've got to work pretty quick here. All right? Um, so if there's a number, if A is not equal to 1, so here A is not equal to 1. Here's the very first step. Are you ready? Step number 1. Okay? To factor trinomials, write this down where a doesn't equal 1. In other words, the number in front of the x squared, your first term, the one with the highest power, is not a 1. Step 1, you're going to multiply the a and the c. Multiply a and c. a is the number in front of the first term. So what is a, everybody? What is a? 8. c is the constant. What is the constant? Not just one, negative one. negative one. It's very important. You used to tell me that if it's positive or negative. So we got an eight, we got a negative one. I want you to multiply and write that product down. Because here's where the magic happens. Write it down, negative eight. That's step one. Now, you're going to do the same thing that you did on the easy ones. You're going to look, whatever the product of these two are, the A and the C, the product of that, all right, the factors of this number, whatever that number is, has to add up to give you that middle term still. That doesn't change. First step is still the same. Now here's the deal. Here's how you're going to determine if it's prime or not. If you can't find factors of negative 8 that'll add up to give you that middle, it's prime. You're done. You can go ahead and stop. So let's see if we can think about it. If it's a negative 8 and I want to add up to get a negative 2, no blurting. Hold on. I'll, I'll let you answer. I want to get a negative 8. First of all, Tyler, both negative, both positive, or one positive and one negative? That's because when we multiply two numbers together, that's the only way we're going to get a negative. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. Bad cop, good cop. I'll have the others watch again in that a second. Positive, negative. Now, I want to find the factors of negative 8 that will add up to give me negative 2. What are they? Negative 4 and positive 2. Negative 4 and positive 2. You're halfway there. All right, now half the battle is done. So step 2. All right, let's write it down. Step two, find factors of the product AC. That was, you know, multiplied A and C, right? So find factors, factors of the product AC that add up. The middle term. Okay? And we just did that. So we found the factors of the product AC. This was the product AC. We got that from multiplying A and C. That add up to middle term. All right? Here's the next step. Are you ready? Here's where we start plugging in the numbers. We know trinomials always factor into two binomials. This is step three, and this is the final step. Here's where all the magic happens. Here's where you've got to do some thinking. Now, here's the deal. It's not as simple as just plugging in numbers. You have to think about how it works. Here's what I always start with. You have to get 8x squared first. That's the first thing you've got to do. Deal with the first term first. Everybody say it with me. Deal with the what? First, first term first. First term first. So I'm going to get the 8x squared. So what I'm going to do, here's where we do this, okay? I need to get this to be an 8. I need two numbers to multiply to get an 8. I know I'm going to have the x and the x. You can go ahead and put that in there, the x and the x. But I've got to figure out the numbers that are going to multiply to give you 8. But here's the problem. It could be 1 and 8, or it could be 2 and 4. And here's the problem. Whatever you choose here, you're going to have to put two numbers here also. And you've got to manipulate all of that so that it still adds up to give you negative 2 in the end. Now, here's where we do this. We're going to take these two factors a little further because these two factors are going to tell you the four numbers you need to plug in there. And they're not only going to tell you the four numbers you need, they're going to tell you where to put them. This is why this method works 100% every time. And then, if, as long as you get the GCF out, and some of you are like, how do I know it works? I've already proved it works. I did a proof for it to make sure it works. Okay, it works for all cases as long as the GCF's out, and it works 100% of the time. Okay, so here's what you do. You take the two factors you got here, 
you know you need to get a plus 2 and a negative 4 to add it to give you the middle term. So we don't want to compromise that. So what I'm going to do is from these two numbers, I'm going to find the factors of these two numbers to get four numbers, and those four numbers go in there. So here's what you want to do first. You want to get the first term first. How am I going to get an 8? There's only two possibilities. What are they? 1 and 8 or 2. Which, can you get a 1 or an 8 out of this? Can you get a 1 or an 8 out of this? I can get a 1 out of either one, right? But can you get an 8? Then you know it's not 1 and 8. So instead of using 1 and 8, I'm going to use 2 and... Which one will the 2 come out of? Positive 2. So I'll be a 2. 2 times what is 2? What kind of 1? Positive 1. All right, and then I'm going to use a 4. 4 times what is negative 4? Negative 1. Okay, now first time it'll seem a little weird. So what I did is I said first term first. I want to get an 8. The only way to get an 8 is either 1 and 8 or 2 and 4. I said I want to use 2 and 4 because I can't get a 1 and an 8 out of both of these. I can get a 1, but I can't get an 8. Now here's the rule. When you do this, you've got to take 1 from each. You've got to take 1 from each. That's the only major rule here. So when I figure out whatever number is going to multiply to give you 8, 2 and 4, the 2's got to come out of 1 and the 4's got to come out of the other. That's the rule. It has to work that way. Now, go ahead and put that 2 and 4 in. And if you want to go ahead and I always tell students they can cross that 2 and 4 out. Now, this is the magic. Are you ready? This, we know that to get a positive 2, I'm going to need a plus 1. I need a plus 1. And you already know what it's supposed to be. It's got to be positive 1 because 2 times positive 1 is 2. Does everybody agree? Now, here's what you do. That plus 1, wherever the 2 is, the plus 1 goes in the other one. So I can go put the plus 1 in the other one. Why? Because now they're the outer. 2x times 1 gives you the positive 2 you want. Does that make sense? Now, the 4, the 4 was in the second one. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. The minus 1 goes in the other one. There's your negative 4x. And you should be able to multiply this out. And there is. You know the method that they taught me when I was in school? Guess and check, have fun. I was given this sheet, and they said, guess what? You just get to sit and run through all the factors until you find the one that works. There was no method. It was just guess and check it. So what I had to do is I had to put the 1 and the 8 in there first. And then I had to try everything for the 1. So I, I, put, a, I put a 1 here and then an 8 here and then I tried 1 and 1. And then I'd say, okay, that didn't work. Then I'd have to go to the 2 and the 4 and then I'd have to try 1 1. Then I'd have to move the positives and negative around until I got it right. You know where it gets really crazy? Is if this number would have been an 8, but if this number would have been a 9. Because then I would have had to go 1 and 8 with a 3 and a 3. Then I'd have to go a 1 and 8 with a 1 and a 9. And then if that didn't work, I'd have to go 2 and 4 with a 3 and a 3. And then I'd have to go 2 and 4 with a 1 and a 9 until it worked. And then it got really, really crazy if this number was a 9 and this number was like a 36. Because how many factors of 36 can you try? I'd have to sit there and try 136, 218, 3, uh, 3 and 12, um, 6 and 6, 9 and 4. I had to try them all. And sometimes I'd try... 14, 16, sometimes 20 different ways until I found the answer. And I'd have holes in my paper for ways. This, there is no guess and check. You always get to the right answer every time. Okay? All right. Go ahead and find the letter that that's answered. The first G. Second G, yeah. Second G? All right, cross that out, put it down there, uh, blank one. Here we go, problem two. You got to go now. Problem two. We'll get all 13 of these sure. done, but we'll get, we'll get a few of them. Sure. All right, go faster now. Here we go. Let's look at it. Number 2, 3x squared plus 10x. 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. Now, tomorrow on your quiz, because you're just learning this today, I'm only going to give you four problems like these tomorrow. Only four. The other 35, 40 problems are going to be the ones that you did like yesterday. Okay? That's going to be about 45 problems, 45, 50 problems. That's how long it's going to be. Here we go. All right, GCF. Is there a GCF? Yes or no? Raise your hand if you can tell me GCF. Yes or no? No? No GCF. That'll be real quick. You just check it. Sometimes they'll have GCFs. A lot of times they won't. All right, what's the first step in our, our little Morris method? Multiplication. 
Multiply A and C. What is A and C in this problem? Three and eight. So what are you going to get? Plus 24. Step one done. Right now, I want the factors that will add up to give you 10. Find the factors of the product of AC to add up to the middle term. 6 and 4, do they want to be both positive or both negative inside? Both positive. So positive 6, positive 4. It's really important to put plus 6 plus 4. That matters. All right, step 3. I'm going to put a, I have a step 3. Find four factors to plug in. And finish problem. There's not really a clear way to say step three. I mean, you're just going to find the four factors, plug them in, and get the answer. Okay? All right, here we go. I say start with the first term because it's first. All right, I want to get a three. I need to get a three. There's only one thing you can get for a three to multiply to get a three. What is it? Three and one. Three and one. Now, the three's got to come out of one of these, and the one's got to come out of the other. What's the three coming out of? Six, so go ahead and put the three there. What's the one coming out of? Four. So let's go ahead and write that in right now. Go write three x and four x. One x. Three x, one x. Done. You're already done with those. Now pay attention. Here we go. Three times what is positive six? What kind of two? Now, if the three's in the first one, where's the plus two go? The other one. How easy this is. The 1 times what is positive 4? Plus 4. So if the 1's in the second one, where does the plus 4 go? First one. If you did this right, it's already checked. You won't even have to check it. Okay, let's check it though. So we'll do 3x times x, that's 3x squared. 4 times 2, that positive 8. Check your outer, check your inner. 6x, 4x, does that give you the 10x? Shazam. Isn't it amazing? Can you believe I invented this method? Should, should I publish this? Yes, yes you should. You should. Okay. You people money? love it. You should have people pay you. So my first this. seven, my first six, seven years teaching. I've been teaching fifteen years now. My first six, seven years teaching, it sucked because I had to teach with guests and chat, and I people hated factoring because there was no way to do it. Now, by the way, what letter is that one? If you can guess the riddle before we get done, I'll give you extra credit. Maybe not. All right, next one. Here we go. I'm going to do one more with you, and then we're going to try one on your own before you go. Then I'll tell you your assignment. Here we go. One more together. What do we do here? And I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I will let you use the calculator mark because sometimes the numbers get really big. 5 times 27. Help me. 5 times 27. 35. One what? I don't think so. Is it? It's 135. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I've spoken yeah, some. So positive 135. All right. Now, this one's one where you would want a calculator because I don't know if I can think of the factors of 135 off the top of my head. Can you? Five is something. All right. Let's try five. Well, we already know five and 27. Five and 27, are those going to add up to give you 24? Well, I don't think so because they're both got to be positive. Five plus 27. So that doesn't work. So. What are some other factors of 135? Who's got a calculator? Who's got a calculator? Quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Apparently, I've got a calculator. Thank you very much. They're on the iPad. 15 and 9. Fi ooh, 15 and 9. Thank you. 15 wow. and 9 wow. add up. Now, I will not give you that big of numbers tomorrow. Thank you. Thank okay? You. Which means now I'm not giving you a calculator. All right. What? That's That's the only way you can use a calculator tomorrow is you bring something that's not an iPad or a phone. Or you, right. you can use my yellow ones if you want. All right, 15 and 9. All right, let's see. What do we do? We've done step one. We multiplied AC. We found the factors that add up to give the middle. Step three, let's find the four factors. So start with the start with the first, first because it's first. first. So five. First. Five and one. Where's the five coming out of? 15. 15. 15. Wow. Where's the one coming out of? Remember, you got to take one from each. So let's go ahead and put a 5x and a 1x. One one X. All right. 5 times what? 3. What kind of 3? Three? Three. Uh, plus three. 3. Where's the plus 3 go? Um, right. The other one. 1 times what? 
Isn't that slick? Slickeroo. All right, everybody try number four on your own right now. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can't do it if you do not factor out the GCF first. There is a GCF in number four. Go ahead, right now. Write number four on your own. Now, the GCF, after you factor it out, just leave it out front. What is the GCF on number four? Everybody look at it. Four. You can factor out a four, which means that problem is a joke now. Oh, my gosh. It's not even a hard one. This is a good reminder. We're going to do one more. All right, what's the GCF, everybody? Look up here. Let's just speed through this one. Factor out a four. You can factor out a four. You have to factor out a four. You want to factor out a four. If you do not factor out a four, you're going to have a problem. Now, we're going to have x squared minus what? 3x. 3x plus 2. Okay, you good with that? Now, the inside leaves the four out front. Do we need to do the Morris method for this one? No. No, why? Because it's an easy one. There's a one in front. So you don't need to do the Morris method. So all you need to do is find the factors of two that will add up to give you negative three. What is it going to be? Quick. So obviously, what's the only factors of two that will add up to give you three? Um, negative one and... All right, x minus one, x minus two. Now, I don't know if you noticed that answer. We're not done yet, guys. we got two minutes here. I don't know if you noticed that answer is not over there. One of the, the four is distributed on one of these. I don't know which one. You're going to have to find it yourself. Which one is it? What? There's no four distributed on one of these? No, there's not. What about if I take and change this four into two times two and distribute the two on one of these and two on the other one? So if I make it 2x minus 2 and 2x minus 4, do you see that one? Yeah, that's G. The first G? Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, real quick, number five. Let's do that one together, and then we'll call it good. You're going to finish this right here, and then you're going to finish on the net, on the packet section eight only. Only section eight. What did I say? Section eight. All right. So number, uh, number five, last one. 6x squared minus 7x minus 10. There is no GCF. What do we do to start this? So we get a negative 60. Now, need a positive, need a negative. What are the factors of negative 60 that will add up to give me negative 7? It's not 6 and 10. It's 15 and 4. Now that is 15 and 4. 12 and 5? 12 and 5 work. 12 and 5 work. Negative 12. Negative 12, positive 5. All right, what do we start with? What term do we start with? The first because it's first. Now, pay attention here. Six has two possibilities, six and one or two and three. Let's start with six and one. Can I get a six and one out of both of these? Yeah. Yes. And here's why it's a six and one. Because if you chose the two and the three, would you have been able to get a two and a three out of both of them? Huh. You would have gotten the three out of this one, but could you have got the two out of there? It will automatically get down to where only one of them will work. So it's six and one. The six comes out of this one, the one comes out of this one. Put it in there. Six x, one x. All right, we can do this fast. One times what is positive five? Positive five. So where's the plus five go? Be careful. The one's in this one, so the plus five goes in the, the other one. Remember, it always goes in the opposite one. If the one's in the second binomial, the plus five got to go in the first binomial. All right, six times what is negative 12? Negative two. So where's the negative two go? There it is. Polygon, polygon. Is it polygon, polygon? Yes, I gotta give you nice credit. That makes sense. Poly, poly's gone. All right. Here's all I want you to do. You do not have to do the rest of this worksheet. You need to do section eight. Look at me. On a separate sheet of paper. Separate sheet of paper. I am putting the answer key up at what time tonight? Eight. Eight o'clock. Now, if you don't have Wi-Fi, you can check in the morning when you come in. Email me if you got questions. Section 8. You guys did great. Why don't we do the other?